question from the true law jocks in the room to each of you, the justices. And an important question for everybody, though, nonetheless. Discretionary review of the Ohio Supreme Court permits the court to review cases of, quote, great public interest or great public importance or cases that raise, quote, substantial constitutional questions. This standard offers wide latitude. So what we'd like to know is how does your judicial philosophy influence the kinds of cases that you are or will be looking for as a member of the Ohio Supreme Court, and, and both the type of cases and also the number of cases. Should the, the court hear uh, as many cases as possible or as few cases as possible, or is, is the number just right? State Senator Skindel. Thank you. Uh, one of the reasons why I ran uh, for uh, and, and I'm running for the Ohio Supreme Court is to bring balance and fairness to, to the court. And one of the components is those cases that uh, the court takes up in discretionary review. What we have seen in, in uh, the recent years in the court is that certain types of cases impacting certain type of litigants have predominant uh, have been uh, predominant in uh, the Supreme Court's acceptance of these particular cases. And that's a great concern uh, because uh, not it shows and it's reflective that uh, having, uh, for the most part, a predominant uh, philosophy, as, as Justice O'Donnell uh, had talked about, being on the court, uh, you don't, uh, it's an injustice to all Ohioans because not all viewpoints are represented on the on the Supreme Court, as we know that there's no elected Democrats uh, currently on the Ohio Supreme Court. There's one Democrat, but no elected Democrat. What we need is to ensure that our court uh, represents uh, uh, all Ohioans and reflect all viewpoints, because when we decide what cases to take and how we're going to decide those cases, we need to pull, uh, pull upon um, and, and build strong legal doctrine, and you can only do that if you are around that conference table discussing all, uh, all viewpoints uh, as represented by all Ohioans. And Judge O'Neill. There's one thing I learned on the Court of Appeals. No matter how trivial a case looks to uh, you or me or the lawyers, to the person who filed the lawsuit, it's doggone important and it's their day in court. The problem we have at the Supreme Court level is the volume. The, the, the reality is that once a matter of law has been settled, it should be left alone. I don't believe that, uh, that every case needs to go to the Supreme Court. I don't intend to be a bleeding heart that's saying, okay, we've got to bring the Smith case in so they can see finality. The reality is most finality, most finality happens at the trial court level. <coughs> Courts of Appeals may be reversed 5% of what they see, and the Supreme Court, I believe, should be the ultimate arbiter of big issues. The reason I say that is that, uh, as you, some of you know, the last time I ran for Supreme Court, we had some federal court involvement on my ability to speak on issues. At that time, I did say, and at this time, I do say, the Supreme Court of Ohio was and is wrong on school funding in Ohio. I may have been, uh, you know, uh, clairvoyant at that time because, as you see, the educational system in Ohio is imploding before us. It is being purchased one building at a time by the highest bidder. And the Supreme Court of Ohio, when they were given the opportunity to make the big call, the big call in the separation between the legislature and the judiciary, they blew it. And then they kicked it back to the legislature and every taxpayer in Ohio is now paying the price. So I believe that when we talk about discretion, I am not unhappy with the Ohio Supreme Court. I think they do a good job. But every once in a while, they just drop the ball because they're trying to increase volume by putting their imprimatur on cases which are already settled. You see so many cases come before the Supreme Court that everybody knows what the outcome is going to be, and that's the way it should be. And I say those cases should not have been accepted, and the Supreme Court should use its time on the big issues and do it right. Thank you. And Justice Cobb, same question to you, please. Um, thank you. Um, well, um, talk about how I look at uh, cases. Um, and when I look for uh, cases to accept under a discretionary review, and I might add that um, it's uh, the discretionary uh, review is a, a 
smaller number of cases than most people might think. Uh, there's a lot of cases that come in under original uh, jurisdiction. But I look for cases where the law is unsettled uh, in the area. And so this will help uh, create some clarity to the law that, of course, must be applied by all 720-plus uh, judges uh, in the state and the 385 trial and appellate courts. Or uh, where, the where the law, maybe the statement is correct, but the law is being misapplied to the facts uh, in cases. And of course, that is almost the same as, as the incorrect uh, law. And the other uh, thing that I, would, uh, that I look for is where there are conflicting decisions among different courts. And it might not be a conflict that under the Constitution has to be certified and come to us, but one in which courts are deciding the same case different ways. And that means the law is not being applied uniformly throughout the state of Ohio. And so those cases need to be brought in so they can be settled uh, as well. I do not look for cases uh, on the uh, basis of any policy or ideology. Uh, rather, all of the cases that fit the criteria need to be brought in uh, to the court for a determination. Uh, the one thing that rule, might rule out some cases is they come to us in a very unusual procedural posture, uh, or they're very fact-specific. And so it's hard to get at the real issue involved, and those cases really are not appropriate candidates for the court to take in because we're not going to be able to develop any clarity uh, in the law in that regard. So that is how I look at cases. Uh, if we have a large volume of cases that need to be uh, brought in and decided, I think that's what we should do. If it's a smaller number of cases, then that's uh, what we should do, uh, the cases that fit this criteria. Thank you. Thank you. And same question to you, Justice O'Donnell. If I understand the question, it's with respect to the ideology of the court in ex exercising its discretionary review for cases to be considered by the court. In almost 10 years on the Supreme Court, I've probably cast some 25,000 votes on different cases uh, in this realm. The process that is undertaken at the Supreme Court in exercising our discretion is that each member of the court individually reviews every memorandum in support of jurisdiction and every memorandum opposing jurisdiction. And that work is done individually. And then when we meet in conference, we discuss the matters uh, in order to determine, as the Constitution says, whether the case has a matter of public or great general interest. Now, any judge who has an agenda, that is, someone who is trying to change law, should not be exercising that kind of control in order to change a field of law. Judges are not enactors of state policy. That role belongs to the General Assembly. What judges do is to determine whether the case presented has or doesn't have a matter of public or great general interest that is not well understood by the lawyers or is being applied differently by separate appellate districts around our state. So when I exercise this type of authority in determining whether or not a case should or shouldn't be presented, I am looking for matters that apply broadly to 11 and a half million people in our state and that will bind all of the 730 judges throughout our state and that will clarify the law in a field where the lawyers need some direction. And that is the basis on which uh, this, this uh, exercise of authority is cast in my case. 